Hello everyone, welcome back to another session by K21 Academy. Today our cloud expert will be talking about domain 4, that is design business continuity solutions. So let's get into the video. Now going for the another module that we have designing your business continuity. Now most of the discussion is about the DR and about your high availability requirement over here. So simple question over here guys that you have an on-premises network and your Azure subscription and your on-premises network have several branch offices over here. Now a branch office in Toronto contains a virtual machine named VM1 and that is configured as a file server. Okay, so you have a VM1 on the on-premises, users access shared file on VM1 from all the offices and you need to recommend a solution to ensure that users can access the shared the file as quickly as possible in the Toronto branch office is inaccessible over here. Which should you include in the recommendation? Azure Recovery Service Vault and Windows Server Backup, Azure Blob Container, Azure File Sync Service, or Recovery Service Vault and Azure Backup, or Azure File Share and Azure File Sync over here. Guys, I hope this you can answer. Take your time, analyze all the architectures, and then give the answer, guys. Just try to create an architecture. Use your pen and paper and try to create an architecture that if you will be needing such kind of the requirement, how you will be able to accomplish, right? Because right away, picking up the choices will not be a fruitful gain over here because we need to understand the architecture first before going for any option over here. Let's see this. So the answer is D, Azure File Share and Azure File Sync. So most of you are correct, guys. Your question itself says, guys, it is a file server, right? Now, blob container will be a choice when you are keeping an unstructured data, right? Over here, you don't have a requirement for syncing and sharing. I mean, sharing is the requirement that blog will be able to meet, but the blob will be, you know, usually the recommendation of the choice where you would like to keep an unstructured data for that. Now, C is a recovery service vault and a backup server. Guys, definitely there is an option, right? But over here, you want to allow the users to have the accessibility. So each and every time for these many sites, you, you want to allow them to access the file from the backup server. So how frequently you will be backing up? If you will be backing up, definitely you need to set up the backup policy. Let's say you want to backup, let's say 10 times on daily basis. Now, every time somebody is accessing the backup data, it will have the old data available, right? So you require a mechanism which will be automatically syncing that particular data. Data backup, let's say if you have taken a backup at 4 p.m. and you are accessing that at 6 p.m., still it will have the data for 4 p.m. only, right? So you require a file sync that automatically it will be able to sync the file over there. Are we able to follow, guys? Think from a practical perspective, guys. If you will be taking the backup, what would it will do? It will keep a old data. Right backup will be a choice. Let's say you would like to come out from a situation where files are getting corrupted, right? Then we will be going for the backup option. B is not a choice because it is a blob container, guys. We don't keep, you know, hundreds of files into the blob and we want, you know, thousands of the users to be accessible from multiple sites, right? Because that is a blob. How you will be able to differentiate that which particular file is available. So better choice is to share that particular location where files are available and that is your file sync service coming into the picture. First option is definitely not a choice because why you would like to back up the entire server and then giving up the option to access them. Anyways, your backup server will have the old data, right? It is a VM backup that we are talking about. Guys, are we clear? Let's see the explanation over here. D, your Azure file share and the file syncs offer offline access in the primary server in unavailable as copy and help in your cloud endpoint basically, right? So you will be syncing that particular file in your file share and then users will be connected through SMB protocol. That is one way or you can allow them to have the accessibility through the network as well. Both are available because if you create any storage account, it does give you the option to use the accessibility using service endpoint or the private endpoint connectivity. So that option can be utilized. But the thing is the file has to be sync. Okay, guys, another question. You have a SQL server on your Azure VM and your databases are written nightly as a part of your batch process. Now, why we use batch process, guys? Let's say a particular task that you would like to do in a sequential order or maybe in a particular duration of the time or distributed among multiple processes over here, then you require batch service. So you need to recommend a disaster recovery solution for the data 
and the solution must meet the following requirement provide the availability to recover in the event of regional level outage that is point one support a recovery time objective rto of 15 minutes support a recovery point objective rpo of 24 hours and support automated recovery over here and minimize the cost okay now your choices are what should you recommend over here azure virtual machine in the availability set your azure disk backup and always on availability group over here and azure site recovery okay guys let's see the answer here guys that is azure site recovery that was a straightforward guys because we are planning for the dr over here right backup will not be the purpose solving for the dr because in the recovery service world it has to be in the same region so let's say the region goes down your recovery service world is also goes down it will not be a fruitful choice availability set is for meeting your high availability requirement not the dr right so definitely a and c is not a choice b is already out of the picture because it will not be able to help you at a regional level outage so that was pretty simple guys over here okay guys next question a company is planning on moving their on-premises resources in azure and they have three different applications that belongs to the different departments each application have a different requirement for the business continuity as given hr application over here for the hr department the application data needs to be retained for three years and the recovery time objective would be 15 minutes logistic department here the service management team wants to ensure that the application must be able to recover point in time data at daily granularity level and rto would be six hours and you have to recommend which service should be used by each department you have to also ensure the costs are minimized which of the following that you will be using for the hr department azure site recovery only azure site recovery and backup azure site recovery and azure migrate so guys these are three options only you have to pick one choice over here what you will be suggesting over here the answer is c your azure recovery backup okay guys the answer is b this is incorrect over here because here we have written this b right it, sh it should not be the c it is b only so people who have selected b is the correct answer guys the choice is azure site recovery and azure backup the uh, option was b not c so this is incorrect this has to be b written over here okay guys just wanted to know people who have selected a guys let's have a discussion on that cost should not be minimized by putting the things on the risk okay so cost will come into the picture once your requirement will be completed you will not leaving any requirement just to save the cost i get my point so in this particular approach what they have that you know that the application data needs to be retained for the three years right now you know that whenever you will be doing the replication right rto and rpo will be there because you are dealing with the across region right let's say you have a backup of, uh, let's say you have a machine in east us and you are replicating it in west us or central us definitely rto and rpo will be there right now let's say if anything happen let's say corruption that can also be replicated or let's say if your particular region goes down another region will not have that particular data for point in time restore right so what we discussed in our last session that you know whenever you are doing the you know dr backup is definitely you have to go for that who will be creating a dr without a backup right somebody has to ensure that regional level outage is covered right only then you are trying to ensure that you know that another region will be available for first you have to consider all the regional requirement right so backup we cannot miss i hope it makes sense whenever you are dealing for the failover your failover will take time right so your dr won't be instantly available right now dr will only come into the picture when the regional level outage goes down right regional level outage is there now let's say your region is not down your data is getting corrupted right that corruption will also be replicated or let's say there will be a ransomware attack or malware attack right or somehow the region is up but your data having a challenge I got him a point. Let's think in that manner that you have two systems, right? You have one your laptop, another laptop, right? The data that you transport from one laptop to another, right? You sync that particular data. Now the another machine will come into the picture when your primary is going down. But let's say your primary machine is up, but the data have an issue. The data itself have a challenge. So definitely you will be going for the backup at that point of time, right? Not for the DR because the corruption might be replicated already. So what you do? You try to check what was the backup where the data was not corrupt. 
so you might want to go for a data let's say if a problem happening at 5 pm you may want to check at 4 30 backup or let's say at 4 o'clock backup dr is there but dr is not be able to solve the purpose of the backup so backup is must yeah and guys why is cannot be a azure migrate because guys azure migrate comes into the picture when you are dealing with your on premises to the cloud migration right there is nothing re required over here for your on premises over here right it is for the planning part that a company is planning for moving the other on premises migration over here this you required for the discovery process where you would like to you know manage the environment over here so it may may not be there you may want to go for a lift and shift directly so guys the requirement will be over here your azure site recovery and your azure backup that you will require must over here right on premises what they have mentioned guys see a company is planning on the on premises resources to azure they have three different application that belongs to the different department and each have a different requirement for business continuity as given below this is a migration tool right it is not helping you to maintain the business continuity right business continuity will be your asr service and the backup your migration will be your requirement whether once you will be able to migrate properly then it will be coming into the picture right so on premises was there there might be a thought that you know it can be your azure migrate but the first thing you will be creating a backup another thing you will be using your azure site recovery because backup is must guys we cannot go for the migration without a backup don't do that because the moment you will be picking this particular choice you are only thinking about site recovery and migration you are not thinking from the backup perspective now that was in module 10 guys you can go for this particular module you can have the test practice questions for that so guys i hope you really liked our session and if you have any kinds of doubts you can please comment down below and our team will reach out to you and do not forget to give us a thumbs up and if you are really intrigued by the kind of terms used and you want to learn more about it then we have something really really special for you we have this free class on microsoft azure solutions architect certification that is az305 and if you want to learn more about it then you just have to log on to k21academy.com forward slash azure sa02 in this session in this free class you'll be learning about why you should be learning azure cloud your paths to learn azure solution architect expert certification you'll be getting to know the difference between az303 az304 az305 and a lot many insightful things so if you want to do this then all you have to do is just log on to k21academy.com forward slash azure sa02 after that you'll be seeing this kind of interface just click on book your free seat now and select your availability according to the event date mentioned add your name add your phone number add your email and every detail will be conversed to you via our mail and after that just proceed ahead on the extreme light you'll be seeing this kind of link so just copy this link save it to your calendars and i will see you in the next class till then take care and keep hustling